Good morning. It is good to see some of you here and some of you online. And uh, next week we're hoping to open up. So watch your email, your Facebook notes, and any other way you check. We'll even put something on the uh, website so you'll know exactly the, the rules. We're going to change seating around a little bit here and all kind of things. So make sure you pay attention if you want to come next week. Also, all of our services next week, and we're going to just have the two, I believe, uh, but we'll still have the drive-in. Somebody already asked me, are we still going to have the drive-in also? Yes, because Randy said yes, and so therefore, I know the answer is yes. Well, listen, this week we're doing chapter four. By the way, Rodney, great job last week. I was able to watch you at the beach with insecure internet, and I had to re-secure it, but it was great watching you. And I actually posted a picture of me looking at you watching it, and then Kristen said, oh no, Eric, that looks terrible. You've got to retake that picture. So then I took another picture like this, which, was, which I thought was hilarious because that's, like, that's not how you watch the sermon. If you're at home right now and that's how you're watching the sermon, I'm concerned about you. But I'm glad you're watching. You're most likely looking like me and would not want someone to take a picture because it's like this. And, uh, but anyway, but we're glad you watch online. Uh, today we're going to talk about preparing and planting. And in the first week in chapter 1... Uh, the sermon was about preparing your heart. And today what we're going to talk about is a little different take on that. And it's the difference between these two things. These are, these are similar when you look at them, but there's one very significant difference. And if Bob was here, he would say it's the red handles. But it's not just the red handles. This is a sieve, or as we like to call it, a colander. And this is a bowl. And the difference between a sieve and a bowl is this. When I put noodles in here, it's to get rid of the water. It doesn't really soak. Everything goes through it. But if I put noodles in here, it's to let everything that's in with the noodles soak in. And here's the deal. As we talk about God's word today, I'll be honest with you because, you know, why lie to you? Is that oftentimes, even your pastor, when he reads God's word, I will finish reading a verse or a passage or a chapter for the day. And literally, as soon as I get to the end, I think, what was that about? Because I read it like a sieve. But if you and I will take, even listen, even if it's one verse, if you and I will allow God to take that one verse, allow it to sink in. Allow God to use it to impact our lives. The Bible will change you. And listen, most people know that. They've actually done studies uh, uh, asking people questions. And most people, when they're asked, do you believe God's word changes you? A very large percentage, according to Barna, says, yes, I believe God's word changes you. And most Americans believe that God's word is holy. Still, to this day, they don't read it. The percentage is lower than 50% of people who even read their Bible uh, even once a week. And that's actually going up less and less. Uh, but the good news is the people who are reading it are starting to read it more. Which I think part of the reason for that is because now you have it everywhere with you. There's no excuse. No excuse. We carry the Bible with us. And um, so here's what I want you to know. If you spend time in God's word. That means if you spend daily time reading God's word, not just, allowing, not just reading it like a, like a history book, but if you allow God's word to sink in, if you, when you have a Bible study with other people, you allow God's word to, to sink in, it will change how you treat other people. They've actually done studies that people who read God's word are more aware of what God is doing in their lives. That totally makes sense. Because why? Because you're re focusing just like listen and all of us know if you watch the news all the time the news has two purposes i will say this till the day i die fear and anger and you typically if you watch the news are going to have one of those two responses to the news why because that's how they motivate you to keep watching fear and anger isn't it wonderful so turn that off and when you spend time in god's word his spirit, the Bible says, will fill you with what he calls the fruit of the spirit. Would you like to be more loving? Would you like to be more kind in the way you respond to people? Would you like to have more joy in your life? 
Hey, how about more peace? In the middle of a time where no one seems to have peace, how would you like to be the light in a dark world? The Bible, when you spend time in God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to change you, you'll be full of more peace. And boy, wouldn't that make you a lot nicer to be around at the house? Wouldn't that be a lot better at work when things don't go well? How do you and I respond? Today we're going to talk about a very simple truth. We're going to talk about the three P's of preparing and planting. And there's more to this chapter than what we're going to talk about, but I could only talk about so much. You know, we're trying to do a chapter at a time just to talk about this book of Mark. You know, what's awesome about the book of Mark is most theologians, I don't know why I spread that word out in a weird way, most theologians... Um, uh, believe that it was the first one written, the first gospel. You know, the gospels are the first four of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And Mark is the book that I consider the Cliff Notes version. But many consider it the action version. They use the word and a lot. And it was Peter's stories uh, uh, to Mark, John Mark, what a lot of people think are, is John Mark, to John Mark, and John Mark wrote them down in Rome to people who knew nothing about Jesus. And so it's a great book, and it even explains, sometimes uh, uh, the book of Mark will go into explanations of things, because if you were not Jewish, you might not understand some things. So he'll explain it or talk about what it is. But he also moves very quickly from theme story to theme story, not necessarily in order of when they happened, but in the order of themes. And so today's theme primarily in chapter four is about seeds and planting. And we're going to look at the three P's of preparing and planting. And here's what I want to challenge you to do today. One, one very special thing. Here it is. I want to challenge you to come up with a time and a place where you will spend time in God's word every day. Before we go any further, I just want you to think of the where. Where, where will you go to read your Bible? Now, I will tell you that you can read your Bible in bed. But if you're not careful, you will find yourself at the church of the inner spring. With Pastor Pillow and Reverend Sheets. Discussing the song of snoring. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's right. Somebody yelled hallelujah. So I want to challenge you to do that. And listen, if you already spend time, daily time in God's word, then I want to encourage you to move. Make sure you're moving from this to this. Sometimes that happens when you get in a Bible study with other people and you allow it to marinate your life. But I want to challenge you today. That's the only challenge for today. But I hope as we read God's word in this chapter that you'll see the importance of spending time in God's word. So number one, God's word has potential. Now, I used to teach science and I love the idea of potential energy. Potential energy is why when you're carrying your hammer across the house and you slip and drop it on your foot, why it's painful. Because you stored the energy of the hammer and then released it all on your foot. Have you ever done that? If you haven't done that yet, I can tell you it hurts. But we also use batteries in all kind of things. And I remember when I was a kid, we would get toys with batteries for Christmas and nothing was open that sold batteries except for 7-Eleven that sold them for about $10 each, right? You remember those days? And so you would beg your mom or your dad to run to the store and get you some batteries. But why do batteries work? They've stored energy in these batteries to release later. Listen. When you spend time in God's word, whether it's a paper version or a digital version, like a, like a U version that's on your phone that you can download the app right now, U version, on your phone. By the way, you can also get the message notes on the U version. We upload that every week on there. But when you spend time in God's word, what does it say? The, the God's word has potential energy. How do I know that? Because listen to what Jesus says. And again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. Time out. I want to talk about this. This is really cool. So this was not a normal place to teach. Where did they teach? Where did, where did religious people teach? In the temple. But Jesus wasn't really welcome in the temple. They didn't really like him being there. And the crowds really were too big. And you ready for this? Ready for this? There were men and women together. 
In the temple, they separated those two. They actually had a woman's area and a man's area. And so Jesus could go out by the lake, and guess what? Men, women, and children could all be there. How do we know there were children there? Because of the five loaves and the two fish, right? And so, so here they are gathering near the lake. And why would he use a lake? Because it was the very first sound system. Because when you get near the water and there's a flat area, sound carries much better over the water. And so it says, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got in the boat and sat in it out on the lake. Why? Projection. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching, he said, listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. And then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now, what's really cool about this chapter is Jesus starts with this idea of, are you listening? And later he ends with the idea of, I hope you were listening. (laughs) He starts with, are you listening? Now, one of the things I noticed, one of my favorite pastors from years ago would always say, listen, listen. All the time. It was like a glitch almost in his voice. But I understand why he did it. Jesus did the same thing. Are you listening? Not are you listening. But are you listening? Because when you have God's word. Just like these bean seeds right here. What happens to these bean seeds right now. They're in this package. They've been in this package for a month. Sitting in my house. And I keep thinking, I need to go out and plant those seeds. And until I plant those seeds, you know what's going to happen? Nothing. Eventually, these will die if I get them hot enough or mess them up enough. But God's word is there waiting for you. That potential energy, that potential change in our lives. And yet, it's up to us what happens next. We have to be prepared. And we're going to talk about that more in a second. By the way, pastors love this parable. Because after church, somebody will come to us and go, you know, pastor, I didn't get a thing out of your sermon. And all we think is, well, I just threw the seed. It's up to you what happens with it. So if you're in church and it doesn't impact your life, know this. Listen, two things. Number one is every sermon is not going to feel the same because guess what? You may have not had coffee today. Some of it may be your emotions. It may have nothing to do with what God's doing in your life. He may be doing a deep work in you and you can't even see it right now. But the truth is also sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes we're overcome and we're going to talk about that. And that's kind of where Jesus goes next. But here's what you need to know too. Just because you don't feel something changing you right now doesn't mean it's not changing you. I mean, you can give a teenager a glass of milk and then look at them and go, well, they didn't grow any. So I guess the milk didn't work. But you, but you come back a month later after you fed that teenager for a month and you're wondering, how did I feed them so much? That potential was there. And as it was fed, it grew, even though they won't remember a single meal they ate. They might even not like some of them. It's going to be the same way when you read God's word. You might get into a chapter and go, you know, I don't really like the book of Job. I mean, that is depressing. And yet God can use his word. There's potential energy. Now here's what I want you to say out loud today. Those of you here, those of you at home, if you're somewhere where people are around, you can mumble this and just pretend you're talking to yourself. And here's what I want you to say out loud. Father, change me with your word. And I would add today. Okay? So repeat after me. Father, change me with your word today. Now I want to encourage you, when you open God's word... To say, God, change me with your word today. God, change me with your word today. God, as I read your word, as I listen to your word, as I listen to a sermon, as I meet in a Bible study, change me. I don't want to just meet and let it roll over and go, well, that was good. I went to that. That was a great time. Do you have a great time? I had a great time. Can you believe what they wore? 
I couldn't believe the pastor. Didn't it look, man, he looked tan. He must have had a great time at the beach this week. I did. I had a great time at the beach. All right. You won't remember it, but God can allow that word to sink in. So God's word has potential. Number two, preparation determines growth. Preparation determines growth. Do you realize that most of your life is habits? I'll tell you how I know. I, I did youth ministry for years and years. And, and just a few years ago, even uh, just last year, took kids to camp. Uh, we're missing that this year, but took kids to camp. And it's always been funny to me. Usually we have a seventh or eighth grade boy because his mom is not there to tell him to shower. He forgets. And about the third day, now I have actually had other teenagers push children into showers. It was that bad. But about the third day, you start going, what's that smell? Oh, it's Billy. Billy, have you taken a shower? And Billy has to think about whether or not he took a shower. Now, I can guarantee you that everybody that's in this room today in the last few days has taken a shower. You know how I know? Because I don't smell them when I came in. But when those kids are young, 7th and 8th grade, a lot of those boys, they forget. Or... After they take a shower, they forget to put on deodorant. Now, if you're my age by now, you don't even remember. There's days where you get your shirt on and you think, did I put on my deodorant? Because it's so automatic now. And let me tell you how it works though with a teenager. Seventh grader, eighth grader, they're at camp. Can't get them to take a shower. And then all of a sudden they pass a girl who smells good. And they think, you know. I'm going to take a shower. And the next thing I know, that same stinky kid not only has taken a shower, he has inappropriately applied way too much cologne to his body. And now he smells like a vegetable. It is the, it is, it is, it is just, it, it, he walks in the room and people just back up. And you think, okay, somewhere in between those two. But what happens? That kid, as he gets rapid, he gets in a habit of showering every day. It's amazing. That same kid does not forget a shower. But after a while, just like us, it becomes routine. Most of the things in your life that you do are routines. And I want to encourage you to make spending time in God's word a routine. Now, it takes several weeks to develop a new routine. It tends to be uncomfortable. You tend to have to think through it at first, but after a while, it just becomes normal. And I want it to become normal for you not to read God's word like a colander, but to begin to read God's word in the bowl. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Let's, try, let's get down here. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables. I love this. So the disciples in public, you can see the disciples in public going, yes, Jesus, you're so right. Oh, Jesus, you know what you're talking about, right? And, and they're liars. Well, how do I know that? Because they get, they get, the 12 said to him, um, what, what are these parables about? We have no idea what you're talking about. He told them the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything that is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. By the way, Jesus is quoting a verse from Isaiah chapter 6. What's really neat about Isaiah is there are some very specific verses all through Isaiah that talk about Jesus. But I don't have time for that today. But you look it up. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? Jesus is looking at them like, okay, dude, the seed is the easiest one I'm sharing. And you don't get that? I got a lot of work to do. By the way, if you ever feel dumb, guess what? You're not alone. The guys who changed the world by their witness felt really dumb that day. He said, how do you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. The word, what's the word? The word of God. The Bible. What God says. It's, it's the active word of God. There's a word for the passive word of God. But this is the word active word of God. I, I believe it comes from the word rhema. It's the idea that it's active. Remember, we talked about that it's active. The farmer sows the word. Some of the people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes away. It's like a, like a crow, right? Satan comes away and takes the word that was sown in them. 
I've seen it over and over when I take kids to camps and we go and we, we sit and the speaker starts talking and inevitably the one kid who I'm thinking, oh man, you really need this message is the kid who somebody comes up to and starts talking to. Or they see something and they're distracted by it. Listen, you and I are easily distracted people. I believe everyone in our world today, you know, I, I joke about being ADD and, and what that, how that affects me. But here's what I'm learning. The more devices that we have, the more people struggle with ADD. And so Satan doesn't want you to hear this word today. He wants you at home. And as you're looking at your computer, all of a sudden you're like, bing, and you get an email or your phone buzzes or you start looking around and you start getting distracted. That's what happens here. Others like seed sown in rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. What does this mean? They may look spiritual. They may nod and smile and know what they're saying. But the truth is they've not really allowed it to sink in. I have a place in our house and I'm trying to grow grass. And I kept thinking, man, I fertilized that. I've watered that. What is wrong? And I went over there and there's a big rock. A big rock. And I thought grass is never going to grow there. So you know what I did? I went and got a shovel full of dirt and put on top of there. And guess what? With the 40 gallons of rain we're getting a day per inch. I mean, it's crazy. For all the rain we're getting. For those of you in North Carolina, rain is this stuff that comes from the sky. I know. Your brother wrote from, from up north how nice the weather was. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had bad thoughts. So, so what happened? It begins raining, and guess what? Grass is growing there now. Why? A little fertilizer, a little change, a little more root. And now when the sun comes out, it doesn't just instantly die. That's true for you and me. If we allow God's word to really sink in, it will change us. And how do you know when persecution comes? There are people who look like great Christians till life doesn't go well. And when God doesn't do what they want him to do, they fall away. Guess what? The root was never deep to begin with. They just fooled you for a little while. Still others like seeds sown among thorns hear the word, but the worries of this life. Does this sound familiar? You ever in the middle of your Bible study and your middle of studying scripture and all of a sudden you start worrying about things? Bring a piece of paper with you always when you study the Bible. Because I can tell you right now, every thought of worry or something you have to do is going to come to your mind. And desire for wealth and deceit, excuse me, the worries of the life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. So the word is there, but all these weeds have surrounded it. And then finally, others like seeds sown on good soil, they hear the word and listen to what they do. Listen to what they do. They accept it. What does it mean to accept it? It means, God, I'm going to let you change me. And it produces a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what is sown. See, if I plant one of these bean seeds, it's going to grow a little stalk with a bunch of beans on it. And tons of these seeds will be in that just one vine. It's a Green beans are crazy. They, they're everywhere. And I can tell you, I have a garden right now, and my hot peppers are going great, and my tomatoes are dead as a doornail. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you've got to tend to the plants, and every plant is different. And listen, you are different than me, and I am different than you. And some of you are like, thank God. Amen. Some of you tell much better jokes than Dave, right? We're all different. So the truth is, when you read God's word, you might have to do it a little differently than me. Maybe you get a piece of paper and you write down what the verse is for the day. Maybe that helps you. Maybe for you, sitting outside and having your quiet time and reading a verse every day is more effective. Maybe like me, you're just easily distracted when you do that. So maybe you need a quiet corner with your comfortable chair that you sit back on and you put your feet up and you get your Bible out or you get your digital Bible. Hey, you may not be able to do it on your phone because you got too many distractions there. So maybe you've got to go back to the old paper Bible so that you're not distracted. But whatever it is, allow it, accept it, and what will happen? God will multiply. What's he going to multiply? Love, joy, peace. Now let me tell you, though, sometimes taking care of that plant is difficult. Why? Because you have to forgive. You have to forgive other people, and you have to forgive you. 
And inevitably, when you sit still and spend time in God's word, I promise those thorns of memories and bad situations and worries of this world and fear about money and all the things are going to try to crowd out God's word so that you'll lose it. But if you'll take time and say, God, day after day, I want to spend time in your word, he will change you. So your second thing is this, Father, prepare my heart for growth. Now, listen, understand when you say this prayer, God is going to change you and this is hard. I like the way I am. Leave me alone. I don't want to deal with a bad attitude or a bad action. I like the way I drive. I'm the best driver in the world. How dare you drive in the left lane slow? What is your problem? I'm such a good Christian until till somebody turns left in front of me. We got to hear stories of, it's a family tradition apparently in my family to drive like a maniac. I told Kristen, well, at least I'm getting better. Maybe, the, maybe by the time our grandkids will be even better. Number three, faithfulness determines production. This is the idea of cumulative interest. Let me, let me tell you how this works. You can't go all through the year and say, I'll spend time with my children or I'll make that phone call when I'm on vacation. I'll work out when I've got time. I looked back to see how many miles I drove last year, and it was almost 40,000 miles last year. And, and I thought, you know, a lot of people drive a lot more than that. A lot of people drive a lot less than that. But guess what? I can't drive that in a week. I can't drive that in a month. Well, I hope not. But the truth is, little by little, I drove all those miles. Listen. If you want to build a relationship with someone, it has to be day after day after day, moment by moment. You, you can't wait and eat all your meals in one day during the week. Uh, no, most of us don't. Every once in a while, somebody will say, I forgot to eat. My wife will say, I forgot to eat today. And I go, what is that like? I have no idea. How can you forget to eat I mean, I might not get to eat, but I don't forget to eat. I could come home and say, I didn't have time to eat today. But I never say, yo, man, I didn't even eat lunch today and forgot all about it. No, no, no. I guarantee you that noon comes and my brain goes, hungry. So here's the thing. You can't eat all your meals at once. You can't just read the whole Bible at one time. You've got to little by little spend time. And listen, do that with people. Don't wait to, to call that person that you haven't called. Call them. Send them a text. Little by little is how you build relationships. You can't not spend time with your kids day after day and be distracted on the phone and be distracted with your device and be distracted with work and then think, well, one day I'll have a good relationship with my kids. Nay, nay. It's moment by moment, day after day. And if you have a bad relationship with them, don't expect just to walk in and go, okay, we're starting a good relationship today. Nay, nay. It's cumulative interest, little investments. If you've said negative things between each other, then it's time to turn that around and start to go out of your way to now say positive things, encouraging things. Look for what's good. Don't tear other people down. If you've been a person that tears other people down, guess what? You've made some bad investments. It's time to pull those weeds and plant those seeds. Oh, that's a good. Man, I didn't write that down. So, so Jesus then talks about the lamp on the stand. And what he's talking about is when God puts something in your life, you can't just hide it. Hide it under a bushel? No. Remember that song? He says, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. So here he's saying again, listen up. Consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Basically, Jesus is saying, if you've learned something, do something with it. If I've done something for you, do something with it, or it's going to be taken away. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away. And then Jesus goes into a story of a man who plants these seeds and they, they grow. Why? Because he made investments. God's, God's bringing up what you sow. And then he says, what shall we say? Verse 30. The kingdom of God is like, what parable should we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed. A mustard seed is like the top of a pin. I don't know if you've seen one. If you, if you took one of those straight pins and you look at the top of it, that's the size of a mustard seed. It becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches, the birds can perch in its shade. 
And then it says, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. What did Jesus do? He threw seeds. Some of the people, when they received the seeds, it washed right out. His disciples, when he planted the seeds, even though they didn't always get it, they would take in the seeds and they'd let it soak. And they'd let God change them. Are you allowing God to change you through his word? Are you being faithful with what he's giving you? Here's the other thing. When, when God reveals a truth to you, share it with someone else. Don't hide that light under a bushel. When you feel like God's revealed, listen, call a buddy. Call a friend. Now, you don't have to go through Walmart saying, let me tell you what God taught me. They will lock you up. Especially without a mask right now, right? They'll lock you up for that. But, but, but don't just share it. But maybe you have a friend. Maybe, hey, listen, maybe for you, it's even writing it down in a journal. This is what God showed me today. And allowing God. And then when he blesses you with gifts, share those gifts with other people. Why? Because the Bible says if you don't, then even what you have will go away. It's just like that math class you took. Those of us parents who, th those parents who had to tutor their kids this year all of a sudden realized how much they had forgotten. There were parents who told me, I can't do third grade math with my child. And it wasn't just because, oh, they got this new math. I mean, they tried to use that as an excuse. But the truth is, what they, they had forgotten how to do some of it. Why? Because they hadn't used it. Listen, when God blesses you and gives you insight, use what he's given you so it's not taken away. Father, help me to be faithful with your gifts. The cool part about this is this chapter ends up with Jesus in a boat with his disciples. He's asleep. They freak out. And he wakes up and goes, stop. And they freak out even more. And here's what they say. Who is this guy? Which is awesome. Like they've been with him this whole time, seen him heal people. He's told him he's God's son. And yet they don't get it. He says, where's your faith? Why? Because they already forgot. But we all forget sometimes. And that's when we say, God, would you plant new seeds in my heart? I want to encourage you. Spend time in God's word, allowing the seeds from his word to sink in your heart. You will find that you will be more full of love. You'll be more aware of God's presence. When you go through catastrophe and trial, you will have the strength of the roots that only God can bring as you allow his word to sink in you. Make a commitment today. Write it down. Put it in your phone. Send yourself a text. I'm going to spend time with God at whatever time, whether it's morning or evening. Maybe for you it's lunch at work. And in this place. Just write down the time and the place and challenge yourself to say, I'm going to begin spending daily time in God's word. If you don't have a place to go or you haven't spent time in God's word, go to the book of John. Hey, you can actually pick up where we are today. Maybe you just read a chapter a week with us, read a verse a day or a story a day and just let it roll over and over in your mind and allow those seeds to go deep. If you're watching today, I want to challenge you with this. Do you know that you're a Christian? Do you tell people you're a Christian? There's a lot of people who say that they're a Christian. But if you, ever, if you were ever challenged with, how do you know you're a Christian? How would you answer that question? Would you answer that question because I'm a good person? The Bible doesn't say it's a good person that makes you a Christian. Would you answer the question, I'm a Christian because I go to church? Well, that would be really tough right now. Do you answer the question in any way other than because I've allowed Jesus to be in charge of my life? We used to use the words, I've allowed him to be Lord and Savior. But it basically means, I've allowed Jesus to be in charge of my life, and I've trusted him to save me. Have you done that? If you haven't done that today, I want to encourage you today, you can do that. I'd love to talk to you online. You can send me an email. You can send me a note. You can call the church office. They will track me down, and I can talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. And if you're a Christian, I want to encourage you, put the sieve away, take out the bowl, and allow God to allow his word, the potential of his word, to sink in deep and to change you. God, help me to be faithful with all you've given me. There's a prayer at the end of the message today. We're not going to read, but it's there for you. We're going to have our prayer and our time of giving. You can give online. I appreciate all of you who are giving. It's amazing how God has provided for our church through your gifts. And we're helping at, uh, three other churches in Brevard and churches around the world because of your gifts. Churches that are having a much harder time than we are, we're able to keep floating because of your gifts and what God's doing through you. So thank you for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, I do pray. We all struggle sometimes with spending time in your word. Lord, really spending time in your word and allowing it to sink in. So I pray. Father, through your spirit, as your seeds are planted in our heart, that you would grow them up to fullness. Lord, help us not be focused on the world and the desires of the world and all the things that distract us. Instead, I pray as we read your word, it would turn our hearts towards you. And Lord, as your word sinks deep within us, that we would have the root that withstands trials and persecution and struggle and doubt. And Father, that we would be more loving and caring and kind to those around us. That we'd make investments in our children and our grandchildren and our neighbors and our friends. But Lord, we'd be loving just like you are. May we be so full of your love, it overflows to others, multiplies in our lives. Thank you for these moments. Lord, I pray as we give these gifts that you've blessed us with, that you would bless us even more than we can even give. In Jesus' name, amen.